Hi everybody, it's your AP Biology teacher, Mr. Poser, once again. We are continuing our unit on natural selection by getting into topic 7.2 today of the same name. So this is going to be an overview of what natural selection is all about in this video. And we covered it a lot in the last video. There are a few more points that I would like to make in this video about natural selection and give you a few examples of how, uh, how natural selection works in in uh, how it drives evolution. All right, so this is the same page as that, what I had in the last video. And just as a reminder here, it's the process in which individuals that have certain inherited traits tend to survive and reproduce at higher rates than other individuals have more fitness because of those traits. Okay, and this is what we were looking at before. The brown beetles have more fitness, more reproductive success on account of the fact that they were born with a trait that made them their shell brown. Okay, and their brown shell allowed them to, well, more evade the predators more easily, and thus they pass down that trait for having a brown shell that gives them an advantage and their offspring an advantage, um, and the population changes over time. Okay, this is our original population. This is the population after natural selection has occurred, and there you go. That's evolution. Okay, a change in populations over time, um, and there it is. Okay. Uh, so here's a couple more points that I want to make about natural selection um, because this is, again, evolution and natural selection are big topics to wrap your mind around, um, especially if you've never been exposed to it before. So here's the thing about natural selection, okay? Natural selection and evolution do not occur in organisms themselves. It occurs in populations. And a population is a group of organisms of the same species that can interbreed, okay? So this is our... Uh, this is our beetle population over here. One organism does not evolve. It's not like Pokemon where you go from Charmander to Charizard um, and you evolve over your lifetime. That doesn't make any sense. And that doesn't actually happen in real life. I used to have like a GIF on uh, one of my flip charts of Pikachu evolving. But it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Um, so organisms do not evolve. Populations evolve. Because the gene pool, the total collection of all the genes of a population changes and that's what evolution is okay evolution can't occur in just one organism organisms cannot change their phenotype during their lifetimes they're you're born with your genes right and you can't change your genes you can change which genes are expressed but uh, you cannot change your genes okay evolution is a change of uh, genotypes and phenotypes over generations that's what evolution is not just you know, hey, I used to, I live in the river now, so I got to grow and it all kills. That doesn't make any sense, okay? Uh, so natural selection acts on genetic variation, all right? We discussed our sources of genetic variation when in a couple units ago when we discussed meiosis. We talked about crossing over independent assortment, okay? That results in a wide variety of combinations of genes and wide variation um, in sexually reproducing organisms. Okay? So genetic variation is the cornerstone of natural selection. Okay? Organisms have to be different from one another. They have to have some kind of trait in order for the ones that are the best adapted or well adapted enough to pass on their traits to the next generation. Okay? It's, uh, so natural selection can't happen without genetic variation. And genetic variation is simply differences among individuals in the composition of their genes. Without variation, there is no natural selection. If all of these beetles were green or blue, let's just say they're all blue, okay, none of them would have a better chance of survival than the others if they were all blue. Okay? So without natural selection, this whole thing couldn't happen if all the beetles were the same color. Okay? Without variation, natural selection can't happen. Okay? So... And, and here's another picture again that I showed you last time, but I just want to pound, pound this point home. Environments change. The earth has changed many, 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 many times and in many ways. We've seen lots of different worlds on this planet, um, and life has thus changed with it. Okay, so environments change, causing selective pressure in populations, meaning that um, Certain environments will select the best traits. I'm putting that in air quotes because the environment doesn't pick and choose anything. Okay? But 
whatever traits are best adapted to each environment or are good enough to survive in each environment um, are going to be passed down to subsequent offspring and cause, you know, a change in the population over time. It's going to cause evolution. Okay? So environments change, though, okay? And selective pressures change depending on the environment. Some variations, because every population needs variation for natural selection and evolution to occur. Some variations significantly or increase or decrease fitness of the organism in particular environments. Okay, so another illustrative example here is that here's our classic, you know, bird beetle example. Um, and at, in this scenario, in this environment, okay, we have a brown uh, soil, I guess, brown soil. And that means that the brown beetles probably have the most fitness, all right? They have the best chance of surviving and passing on their traits and reproducing, passing on their traits to the next generation. Okay, but what if the environment was green? Okay, environments change over time. Okay, so if, uh, you know, if a bunch of rain comes by and, you know, it promotes a bunch of plant growth and this environment changes, then the green beetles are more likely to be uh, they're more likely to be selected for, and they're going to have the uh, advantageous trait that will allow them to survive and reproduce and pass on their traits to the next generation and thus change the population over time. Okay? So environments change, and so do organisms. A real example of how this happened is the classic, if, I mean, if you're talking about natural selection you, and you're teaching it for the first time, you can't go a day without talking about the peppered moths. It's the most classic, almost cliche example of natural selection. Okay, so there's these moths, and they lived in uh, pre-industrial England, right? And, uh, you know, these moths are, live in the forest, and there's some variations in the moths. Some of them were, like, dark-colored. Hey, they're peppered because they look like salt and pepper a little bit. Um, the, the darker color, and then we have these moths with the lighter color. Okay, and as you can see from these two, um, this lighter color moth is more, it, it camouflages better with wood in the trees that were in the area. Okay, so uh, predators like this weird looking bird over here, uh, they're going to be able to better see the dark moths that don't match with the, with the environment as well um, as the, the white moths do or the lighter colored moths do. Okay, so darker colored moths were easier for predators to pick off until, you know, England started to industrialize. Okay, so, uh, you know, with the invention of the steam engine and the figuring out that you can burn things and power machines and especially coal, okay, uh, it covered the trees and it got really grimy. It got disgusting and it covered the trees with, with soot, okay, and it made the trees darker in color. It covered them up. Okay, so it wasn't the light-colored moths that had the advantage anymore. It was now the dark-colored moths. Okay, so there was a period of time where the population definitely shifted from being mostly lighter-colored to mostly darker-colored on account that the environment changed. The trees changed color uh, on account of the Industrial Revolution. So thus, dark color was selected for. It was, you know, given it, it had the advantage and light color was selected against. Those with the dark color were able to better survive and reproduce, pass on the trait for dark color to their offspring. Okay, so that's a classic example of uh, natural selection. Another more common one um, is the rise of antibiotic resistance, which we've spoken about briefly, and pesticide resistance. Um, those are mo more modern examples of natural selection that we, uh, that we are in the midst of, okay? So antibiotic resistance, it's a real thing, and it's uh, happening around the world, and it's a result of evolution, okay? Those bacteria, they are evolving. They are evolving, and we can pretty much, we can almost watch them evolve, okay? So uh, if anybody's like, oh, evolution, you can't see it happen. Yeah, you can, and we can experience, experience it today. Uh, but yeah, same idea here. Hey, we got a group of beetles. We apply uh, pesticides to them. Okay, the one that is, uh, well, this red one here, the representing the group of pesticide-resistant beetles, um, is going to survive, and then in later generations, it's going to become more prevalent. Okay, it's going to, you know, uh, increase those allele frequencies in the population. It's going to pass on those traits, and more individuals are going to become antibiotic-resistant over, or excuse me, pesticide-resistant 
over several generations. Okay, we apply the selective pressure again of these anti or uh, sorry pesticides. Okay, and more of these pesticide resistant individuals are going to be members of the population. Okay, resistance increases the fitness of the certain organisms. Okay, so this uh, this red beetle that's an or keep saying that pesticide resistant is going to be more fit than one that's not pesticide resistant. Okay, so it's going to survive and reproduce. All right, another human example is, uh, it's actually sickle cell anemia. Uh, the sickle cell trait evolved in human populations in response to malaria. Malaria is like the world's number one killer um, when it comes to disease. More people die of malaria worldwide than anything else. That At least that was true a few years ago. I don't know if it still is. Um, but malaria is a huge deal. And this sickle cell anemia trait evolved in response to malaria. Individuals with this sickle cell anemia trait that got this random trait um, were more likely to survive, can survive malaria. And they pass down that trait and survive and reproduce, uh, passing down the trait for being resistant to malaria due to these sickle cell, well, yeah, these sickle cell anemia. And uh, yeah, it became more prevalent in the population, especially in uh, the continent of Africa, or particularly Eastern Africa, I believe. Um, where malaria is most prevalent in the world. Okay, so it's really amazing. Uh, even humans are evolving. Um, and so, yeah, the sickle cell trait increases fitness in people with, in areas with malaria. Okay, so having this trait is an advantage in high malaria area, areas. Malaria areas, that rhymes. Okay, uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. Red blood cells infected with malaria can form those sickles Okay, and when they do, it sends a signal to these macrophages, um, immune system cells, to destroy the infected cells. And it's amazing. Um, B, they can't sickle, so they can't do that. All right. Uh, that is it for this video, I believe. Yep, that's it. So uh, let me know if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.